Time for some more role playing. We'll have a look today at the game's newest class, the Artificer. Welcome to the Attic Dungeon. My name is Sam, and whether you want to tinker a tank together or become a walking science experiment, I'm here to help you with everything. Ah, yes, this is of course the part where I encourage you to subscribe to all the weird content that I put out there. Go on, go for it. You know you want to. Ah, the Artificer, one of my favorite classes, both role-playing wise and from a mechanical aspect. I really love supporting the group and no one does it quite like the Artificer. As always, in my RP series, we'll be looking to cobble together a very traditional artificer and then we're going to go full mad scientist and make some wonderful concept that fit just as well on the artificer class as being a study as a tinkerer does. So when looking at a traditional artificer a lot of people imagine a bit of a weird scientist tinkering with a lot of different items and making crazy uh, inventions rather as they go. Intelligent but a bit aloof from the world, always on the lookout for the next big invention. As per usual, there are some basic questions you have to ask yourself when creating an artificer. The first one being a very obvious one, why did you become an artificer? What made you interested in the mechanical aspects of science? Were you trained somewhere or did you just spend a lot of time making your parents' garden shed explode? Was artificing something easily accepted in your home region or were you looked upon for being a bit of a weirdo? Is your home scientifically up to date with the rest of the, of the world or are they even ahead? Or do they rely on magic so much that artificing isn't really a thing there? What is your artificer's goal? What do they want to achieve with their craft? Is there some invention they're trying to make? This one device that they really, really want to make, but it's so advanced that they don't know how, so they have to go adventuring to find ingredients and learn more about their craft. Or is there a different motivation? What I really like when making an artificer is having a theme around their inventions, their infusions and their spells and that is what I'll be focusing on today mostly. You're not some wand-waving wizard, you're a genius making all kinds of devices, the sky is the limit, but it's so boring if you're just some all-around scientist without a real theme to it. Obviously part of your specialty and maybe your theme can already be reflected in your subclass, but you can take it a lot further. Let's say you're an alchemist, Obviously, your subclass feature allows you to go all out with potions. But what if you incorporate this potion theme from level 1? You're the only half-caster class that has their spells at level 1. So look at how you can make your spells look like concoctions, if you're going the alchemist way. Your light spell could be some luminescent fluids that you made and smear onto things. Mending becomes wonder glue. Your offensive cantrips become a various uh, collection of sprays and flasks that you throw at your enemies for acid damage, poison damage and what have you. You get the idea. The sky is basically the limit when it comes to reflavoring spells and your infusions to have a nice theme. Look at the infusions that you want. We're still going with the alchemist flavor here. If you're interested in grabbing that good old plus one weapon enchantment, it could be that you apply this infusion by dipping a weapon into the most wonderful oil that you made overnight, making the weapon both faster and hit harder. You can of course include more flavor than just the one given by your subclass. Uh, me, myself, I play an artificer uh, with a crossbow and a lot of the harmful spells that I cast, or even some of the buffs and debuffs, uh, are actually special shots from the crossbow. How do I achieve this mechanically? Well, 
Artificers can use their infused weapons and other magic items actually as spell casting focuses. So I can really have this Hawkeye like feeling by having a really fancy crossbow that has a lot of special shots in the barrel. He is a battlesmith, by the way. I don't know if the spell casting feature is a battlesmith feature. I forgot to check that before I recorded it, but it is how I themed part of my artificer. The theme doesn't have to be related to your subclass, as demonstrated above. Um, the same artificer with a crossbow is actually very lightning themed. When he casts haste, he is infusing his allies with the speed of lightning. Whenever he infuses weapons or armor, there is this blue sheen appearing around them. Fairy fire causes a lot of blue sparks to cover my enemy. They're basically tiny electricity sparks that keep them visible and nice and obvious for my allies to hit. Be more than a chap who's into science. Think of what type of science your artificer wants to be the best at and see if you can style your spells, your infusions and anything you get that way. Try to visualize what your inf inventions and your infusions look like and how they function. Does it look very steampunky or are the designs a lot more subtle? Now, I'm a terrible drawer, but for my artificer, I made a book that contains all of his spells and infusions and I tried to make some basic designs for all of the infusions. I went a bit overboard though, um, since he is a dwarf, all the spell names are, and infusions uh, are written in the dwarvish runes you find in the core book, but then I added a little bit of explanation in my native language, as if written by my artificer though, explaining why he would use this spell or how he got it, and then I just add the game mechanics for the spell as well, so I don't have to go to another book or go check online how the spell works. It's an artificer. It made sense to me that he would have a design book, so I made one. And what can I say? I had time to spare and I wanted to do something special for this character. I've talked about inventions and such a lot, but once you've covered that aspect, you could look at the personality of your artificer um, themselves. How far is your science guy or gal willing to go to discover the secrets of their studies. Is he the type that is easily distracted by whatever he finds that is connected to the studies that he's uh, conducting? Or is he more of the, I know where I have to be and I will do anything to get there type of scientist? Or maybe he's just exploring to find new things to incorporate into his research. Maybe he has to produce a wonderful invention uh, to convince his master that taught him the craft that he is now a full-fledged alchemist. They're simple reasonings, but they do have quite the effect on how you role-play your traditional artificer. Speaking of traditional artificers, enough of that stuff! On to the crazier ideas. So, where people usually see the artificer as some sort of accomplished inventor type that has worked in a workshop or a laboratory at some point, our first stereotype walks away from that. Let's basically transform our haughty inventor into a scrap merchant. You're just a poor sap with a good brain trying to come by. You could cobble together any two things to make something useful thanks to you living in the most miserable circumstances. Your machinery looks like it's held together with rusty nails and duct tape. And that's because it probably is. Your tools are rusty but trusty. You cannot walk past a garbage disposal place without finding at least two new ingredients for your next invention. Your party members let you infuse, infuse their items with some distrust as they fear that their fancy new radiant weapon might just as well explode as give light. Your fairy fire spell has some nasty rust-colored sparks flying out of whatever contraption you use to cast it. This is also a good take for a modest artificer. You've never boasted about your work a lot, you just did it to survive. 
you're very grateful for any approval you get and you think it's wonderful that people have actually found uses for your tinkerings. As you go on, it could be that your designs get a bit sleeker. As you get better and you get access to proper materials, who knows, you might even have access to a proper workshop at some point. Instead of working out on the street, you could start developing a design that you call your own. Though I always think it would be fun if that design still has some very distinct um, junk-like quality uh, to it. It might look better, it might work better, but it still kind of resembles you gluing things together to make something. You might grow in fame as the ultimate self-made person, able to MacGyver anything into anything. It allows for a great curve in your character arc, coming from the most humble junker beginnings and growing as a fully accomplished artificer. How does your character's personality evolve with this, though? That is completely up to you. Do they stay humble or does the success get to their head eventually? This idea fits on all subclasses. As an alchemist, your potions will look mighty shady. Everyone is sure that those hell potions are not supposed to be mud-colored or taste like mud. But it works great anyway. As a battlesmith, your pet will look like a walking scrap heap at first. But as you go on, it will get some non-rusted parts and might actually start to look like the animal you want it to be. Maybe it doesn't look like an animal at first at all. Maybe you're trying to build a human robot. Whatever. Work towards it. Start with a walking pile of junk and have it evolve visually. And the artillerist, of course, specializing in things that actually go boom, will make the shoddiest looking cannons ever. Enemies will dread them from afar. Friends will dread them from up close, fearing their eventual explosion. And if we look forward to Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, which will introduce the armorer uh, subclass for the Artificer, your suit of armor will go from Iron Man Mark I to Iron Man Mark V over the course of your levels. Uh, mind you, all this junking around has no impact on your gameplay. As per usual, these designs are there to flavor your character. Your items are the same quality as any normal artificer. If the dungeon master starts ruling that because you're a junker, your infusions only work half as well, Ask him that if your background would be that of the world's greatest mechanic, whether your designs would be twice as strong. They will say no, you will tell them to sod off and mind their own business. For our second concept, we're going to step away from the mechanical aspect of the class and take it to a more biological place. I don't know if you're familiar with the Simic from the Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica. They're scientists that improve their own body by grafting on aspects from different creatures. This increases their functions and makes them look weird as hell, as demonstrated by the Simic hybrid race, which you can actually play. There is literally no reason why an artificer can't be a skin grafter. You use your tools more to process animal parts and essences than to bang on metal and the like. If you're casting poison spray, it's very likely to come from some animal part you've attached to yourself or from a weird, unnatural opening in your hand spitting distilled scorpion venom. Your infusions will make weapons look like a biology project gone wrong. Plus one armor infusions add some scales to the suit of armor, giving a very new definition to scale mail. Or maybe they make it look more like a turtle shell. Your artificer might be seen dissecting some animals after battle, trying to gain some new inspiration for his next, next concoction, infusion or invention. Of course, your party members have to be open to your unique way of enhancing people. 
instead of making a helmet of water breathing, you're just slapping gills on people instead. Boots of striding and springing? How about some ostrich legs for you today? Just don't ask what's in my boots of elven kind. You might not like the answer. Again, something can be said for each of the subclasses. The alchemist is of course going to be a master of tapping venoms, toxins and other bodily fluids from beasts and monsters to use them in their next greatest potion. You can fly? Yeah, I tapped some blood from that rock we defeated earlier. This one heals? I uh, got some uh, bodily fluids from that giant lizard we defeated. Mm, yes, tasty. The artillerist, of course, uses the various natural weapons of animals to reproduce spell effects, um, effects rather, uh, and a force ballista might fire a salvo of manticore spikes, for example. Or a flamethrower turret has had some salamander essence infused into it and it looks red, scaly and positively glowing. The battlesmith's pet might not look mechanical at all, though it will always be for game purposes. Unless you homebroom this with your DM, that's perfectly fine if they're all okay with it. It will look like some biotech hybrid made from different animal parts soon together. Please, when first making this uh, pet at level 3, upon creation, have it struck by lightning somehow and shout out, It's alive! ALIVE! Just for flavor's sake. Armor's armor might not look like a suit of armor and might be enhancements to your own body. Possibly you can activate or deactivate this um, Inconveniently, the same amount of time it would take you to don or doff your armorer's armor to look a bit more normal. Maybe you can summon aspects of elephants and rhinos for the guardian armor and go for a snake, a lizard or a rat or whatever, maybe even a spider for the infiltrator one. Of course, this artificer might be frowned upon by any nature-loving party members, but hey, What's a good party without some internal strife? Am I right? The third concept is going to be relatively short explanation-wise because most of it will just function and look like a normal artificer, but you could play this one in a world where there is no technology at all. Um, if your DM agrees to it, of course. You know those movies where some chap gets sent back in time and has to survive in whatever world he winds up in. This could also perfectly work for an artificer in a high magic, low tech setting. You are just someone from another plane, but preferably another time, it is so much fun to do, that gets sent back to his world's version of history, being some high fantasy um, medieval time era, probably. And you did bring your toolkit with you. That one was with you when you got zapped back to the past. So you can use that to make stuff out of the materials that you find along the way. You might even at higher levels be the responsible one for your timeline's version of the Industrial Revolution. Just mind you, don't mess with the space-time continuum too much. Of course, this one is going to really heavily need your DM's approval because you might have to deal with your knowledge of some very large historical facts and how that could influence your campaign. But I think the Artificer is the ultimate class to pay, play some form of time travel. My god, my speech is really going nowhere. Let's try this again. The Artificer really is the best class to play some sort of time-traveling chap who needs to get back to his own time by building his own time machine. There you have your goal. Your, your big invention that your artificer is going to try and make is his own time machine. And you have to do that with components and any possible technology you can get from, let's say, 600 years ago. Good luck! And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, three brand new ways to flavor your artificer into the most wonderful themed science guy. Now go out there and experiment. Let me know the results in the comments down below. And if all goes well, 
We'll see each other again in two weeks in the Attic Dungeon.